So I get a lot of people ask me about Super Slims and PS3s that are 3000 models and ask me why they can't be jailbroken. So I thought I'd just do a quick video today on why that's not possible. So firmware up to 3.56 has Metloader and firmware that's 360 and above has Metloader 2. Now when the PS3 starts up there's a security check process that goes on and the Metloader is part of that process. In 360 and above Metloader 2 is part of that process. Now Metloader 2 we can't decrypt that and we can't look at it and we can't edit it and we can't stop it. So that's why if you're on firmware above 355 on a downgradable model you have to um, use an E3 flash or a prog ski to disable the security to reroute it so that it doesn't go through the metloader 2. That's why if you're on official firmware 4.80 or 4.50 you can't install custom firmware because the metloader 2 check will not accept the new put file, the new update file. <clears throat> so with Super Slims and 3000 models the metloader 2 check is part of the hardware. I'm not 100% it's been quite a while since I've looked at it. I'm not 100% sure how it works, but I think it passes it through the GPU and um, through the RSX chip and other places. I'm not sure. On the uh, Super Slims, it looks as if, like, if you take the NOR chip off, it looks as if there was a chip soldered there before. So maybe they soldered that onto the board to reprogram part of the board and then took it off. I'm not sure. But anyway, so on the Super Slims and the 3000 models, this Metloader 2 check is not just in the software. It's in the hardware. That's why you can't do it. If you um, if you took the RSX off a 2000 model, took the Cisc on and took the Flash and put that onto a 3000 model. So you change the Syscon on the 3000 model, change the RSX and rewrite the new flash. Then you could jailbreak a 3000 model, but it's not going to be a 3000 model because all you're doing is, is you're just editing the hardware so that it's a 2000 model. So it's kind of cheating uh, and the same way. I'm, I'm not, you probably can do a super slim, but I haven't really um, spent much time with that. Anyway, so <clears throat> basically the the firmware is signed with keys so sony signs their their files and their firmware with um with with a set of keys and on 355 we've got these keys i'm not going to get too into it but it's basically sony made a mistake and the algorithm that makes the um that makes the key always made the same key so it, it the 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 sum always came with the same answer so because of that it was possible for us to decrypt it however since they learn from their mistakes, now the algorithm does return a, a, a random number every time, so it's impossible to crack. Well, I say impossible, it's not impossible, but you'd need a lot of computer power and you'd need a lot of years, a lot of time um, spent trying to crack it. So, um, basically, this, this, this here, if you can see where I'm just wiggling the mouse, this is the, um, the, the, the update file, the .pup file that I've decrypted. So, um, so this file will have um, it will have a core OS and it will have a dev flash. Now you can decrypt the pup and then you can re-sign it and you can install that onto uh, over the top of official firmware. However, once you re-sign the core OS or you re-sign the dev flash, the PlayStation won't accept the uh, the signature because the only signatures we have are for three five five. <clears throat> so that's why you can't um, re-sign it. So if I go into the core OS, so you see here we've got the level two kernel. The level two kernel basically it's the operate the, the live operating system of your of your PS3. So there's the, there's going to be one of these in every update. But basically these are the files inside the firmware. So when you install the firmware, it's full of lots of self-extracting files and BIM files and SPRXs that um that, that contain information. Now the self files and the SPRXs and the ISO selfs. There, they they have a signature. So if I if I just show you this, if I double click this, right. So this is its content ID, and as you can see here, this is basically the signature that has been given to this file. So it's signed to 480. It's signed with certain capability and control flags that let the PS3 know what it is and what it does. Um, and ba basically, this signature here will let the file run on a PS3 that's already jailbroken 
because it signed with 355 keys or the 355 equivalent. Whereas after 355, the, the keys are different so the ps3 won't accept it so for example if you if you tried to put this into an official firmware um and then tried to install the official firmware onto 480 official firmware it won't work because the ps3 won't accept the signature um so ba so basically this is the signature of the file and every single file that's executable um will have one of these signatures now this this signature is ecdsa um, which is it's a military grade um, uh, encryption of, of of a file. I don't want to get too far into it because I'll end up being here all day. But if you Google search ECDSA signature or ECDSA encryption, I'm sure there'll be like an abundance of information on Google about it. But basically, this uh, I can't remember whether it was the NSA or the American uh, the American Army who uh, made this encryption. Um, so obviously when Sony first started playing with it they made a few mistakes and the main mistake they made that the um, there's an algorithm so if you if you know algebra um, you know it'll be an algebra equation which will be which will end up with a, a randomized answer every single time whereas obviously um, up to 355 they they messed it up and it, it didn't randomize so it always generated the same number so that's why we got the key and then yeah so um so yeah so if i if i just decrypt this um if i extract the elf out of there so then this so then this is the elf so this is the level two kernel so this so this one is signed and that has the signature and then this one's decrypted where it's extracted the file out of the uh the shell sort of thing uh, and then if you if you see when you double click that like you open it up and then this is all the information that makes your ps3 run in uh in hex in hex mode um so anyway, so for example, if I um, like on my desktop, I've made some uh, some quick signers. So if I just drag this kernel over there and I double click this sign kernel, so it will sign the kernel and then it will spit out a level two kernel self. Um, now basically, what I've done there is I have um, signed the level two elf, and it's given it a header and it's encrypted the file into a level two kernel self, which is like the one in this 480 official firmware. Um, but the, the 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 only signature that we have for these files is will only work up to three five five. So this signature is not valid on four point eighty official firmware. So if you have a a, a PS three that's on four point eighty official firmware, that's running Metloader two. So Metloader two will not accept this signature, and that's why you cannot jailbreak a super slim or a 3000 model because that metloader 2 is in the hardware it's not in the software so as you can see here here's the metloader and there's the, there's the level 0 2 um so the the level 0 2 obviously it can't it can't be decrypted um if i uh if i edit it with a hex editor as you'll see here it's got a header um it's got the header there so it, you know it, it it is encrypted obviously um, and then this is its information, but obviously we can't decrypt it in order to look at what the file is in IDA Pro, understand it, and then like counteract it because it's signed with a key that we don't have and a key that we never will get. Um, and to be honest, this this is why you'll probably never get custom firmware on a PS4, like proper custom firmware, because in order to make the file run on the console, the the file needs to be signed with a specific key and if you don't sign it with that specific key then the console won't accept it now as i said the only reason we've got the custom firmware on ps3 is because we got lucky and sony made the mistake whereas with the the super slim and the 3000 models they learned from that mistake and changed it so that it, it covered that problem now obviously they're going to have learned from their mistakes and they're going to be doing the same thing with ps4 so the the I mean, someone might come with a mod chip, or they may come with some sort of um, some sort of hack for it. But to be honest, I can't really see people decrypting and 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 re-signing files for PS4. I don't really think it's going to happen. Um, but but you never know. Um, so yeah, so that's why you can't jailbreak a super slim or a 3000 model. So um, if you have any questions, just hit me up in the uh, in the comment section.